How you doing, folks? I didn't even know I was on. Welcome to Circle of Christ Church evening, Saturday evening, prayer, praise, and word. How are you all? Let's see, who's on? Jovan, what's up, Shepherd? Yeah. All right, Rose Vega. Hi, Mitch. Hola. Good evening, Pastor Nelson. Wow. Nelson, you're uh, you really are deeply romantic. That was beautiful. It caused me to tear a bit. Uh, Francis, how are we doing, Francis? You know what I mean. How are we doing? Hallelujah. And Farah and 12 other people. Wow, I miss so many people. You were listening to me. I didn't even know I was on. Titi Nidia's home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Pastor, Dios te bendiga. Hi, Judy. You heard me yakking away there. I didn't even know I was on. My producer played a trick on me. All right. Hi, Judith, Andrea, Liz, Torres, Farah, God bless you, Eileen, Mimi. Hey, Vic, good to see you, praying for your dad. Yes, good evening to everyone, good evening to everyone. Praise the Lord, we're glad that you're on with us, and we got around oh, 30, 31 already on board, uh, another minute. Better than before, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, the power of prayer. The importance of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Better than before. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are so good. You are so good. You are so good. Thank you, Lord. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Claribel prayed for you. Claribel has surgery next Thursday. Remind me to pray for her. Titi Dori, how are you? Yeah, you want my autograph. A lot of people have been asking me for my autograph. I know, kind of a, embarrassing a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, we're praying for him. Happy to be in church, huh? In church seven days a week, twice a week. You guys are going to get really holy. We're going to call you the Holy Rollers. Carmen Jimenez, thank you, for, thank you for what you did for Nancy Carmen. You are a great mentor. And uh, I'm so glad that you're coming on. Amen. Now, you're living down south somewhere. Am I right? I, I didn't even know you yet left the New Yorkers. Uh, where is it? North Carolina? Or somewhere down south of Virginia? I don't know. Anyway, I keep looking down because I have my iPad and I can see it a little closer. But I got to look that way because the camera's that way. Praise the Lord. Well, we have enough to get started. On the 14th. Oh, I thought it was next Thursday. So it's not, okay. Yeah, because, see, next, today's Saturday, so next Thursday is this Thursday. Okay, so it's the following, the 14th. Amen. So we got extra prayers in for you. ¿Cómo está, Pastor? Yo estoy mejor. Gracias a Dios. Cada vez que vengo aquí, estoy bien, Carmen. Estoy bien. Me hace falta un par de chistes. Hace tiempo que no me han enviado nada de reírse. Y fíjate, en estos tiempos necesitamos reírnos un poco, así que este, buscan los archivos. <laughs> Hi Jackie, how are you? God bless you. Good evening to you too and to your family. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's uh, let's get situated here and get comfortable so we can pray. Start our worship time. Amen. I have I have a treat for you. I have a treat for you. You know, I always look for a treat. I don't always find one, but I, I it, just because I don't bring a treat doesn't mean I haven't looked for it. Amen. Somebody said, send the love, a blessing. I love you. Oh, good. I love you too. Iris Ponce, God bless you. From Chicago. Wow. Is it still cool over there? Amen. Hi, Gigi. God bless you. That's not my sister, Gigi. My sister Judy's there. That's Helen, Gigi. And uh, Sister Love, yes. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me and my children. I haven't heard the word chiste in a while. <laughs> well, we do a lot of chistes in this house, starting with uh, Mrs. Colon. She's a walking chiste. And, uh, and then Kaylin doesn't go too far behind. Amen. Hey, my sister Gigi. There goes my sister Gigi. Gigi Robinson. God bless you, Gigi. God bless your family. Well, we welcome all of you this evening to our prayer, praise, and word session Saturday. And uh, we got to get ready for Sunday. Uh, please share it. Those of you who are on early, please share. Remind the members of our church, uh, Circle of Christ Church. And if you're planning to be with us tomorrow, uh, it's Holy Communion Day, so you should prepare 
the juice and the bread or the cracker. Uh, I'd love for you to send me pictures uh, uh, of your um, communion set, whatever you do at home, whether it's a, a cup or a glass. Uh, uh, one sister made unleavened bread, and she sent me a picture of that. That was Elizabeth Paris. Amazing. And, uh, and so um, don't forget, don't forget that tomorrow morning we have communion service right after the preaching. Hi, Pastor. I'm still upstate. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, where did I get the idea that you have moved? I don't know. I must have been talking to another Carmen thinking it was you. All right. Uh, yes, you enjoyed it. Well, I'm so glad, Carmen. You're a blessing. And we're always glad to see you. It's been a long time since we made a trip up there to bring you a, a parranda on Christmas. I remember that time we went up to out there. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so yes, so tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock we have our service. We have a we have special guest worship leaders, right? Uh, the Jesus Jet is going to go get uh, two two uh, members of our church who are going to lead us in worship. Tonight we have two different members of our church who are going to bless us with special worship, and so this is a good night, uh, and that's my treat for you guys tonight. All right, so let's get started. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you one more time, Lord. We've been talking to you all day. And Lord, you're always, always ready to listen to us. You never get tired of our prayers. As a matter of fact, you call us to pray without ceasing. You're such a relationship God that you ask us to talk to you all day long in any and every situation. What a wonderful thing that is, that we know we can come to you. So tonight we come to you asking you, O oh Lord, to hear our prayers, answer our prayers uh, according to your will, and strengthen us and give us, O oh God, the anointing to proclaim your word and to encourage one another through this time, O oh God. We pray for those that are struggling. We pray for those who are struggling spiritually, those who are, who are lapsing in their prayer time and, and, and lapsing in their Bible reading time. Lord, encourage them snap into it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we, we pray for those that are going through emotional hardships, oh God. Anxiety, depression, sadness, grief, mourning, disappointments, oh God, and just general malaise because it's tough. Financially, it's tough. And oh Lord, we, we miss each other so much. And so Lord, I pray that you help us. You give and infuse us with your strength, with your Holy Spirit. And for those that are struggling physically, oh Lord, rebuking every fever, rebuking every headache, rebuking every body ache, oh God, rebuking any respiratory conditions, oh Lord, we rebuke the coronavirus in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we pray not only for those that are hospitalized, but those that are at home and are finally difficult, oh God, to get moving, oh God. And so Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for Joey and for Esther helping me here. And I pray for all of my brothers and sisters right there on Facebook Live and all those that will hear us even at different times. We ask you, O oh God, to bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I wanted to sing one. And since my voice is just a little bit better than this morning, man, I could barely sing this morning. It was so raspy. But I guess I haven't talked that much today except to God. And I did go for a walk. I got some vitamin D in. And, and uh, I took Jojo with me. And she's such a little rascal. She, she's, the, she's, she's an escape artist. And she went and attacked the Doberman Pinscher. <laughs> Thank God he was a nice Doberman Pinscher. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is an old, old gospel song. It's a beautiful song. I used to do it in a band called Resurrection. We did it jazz style back then. Esther wants to do a bolero style, and I don't know what style is going to come out because uh, we'll do it. It's called No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong. No one else could 
you hope you enjoyed that if you hadn't heard that song before well that's an old classic from back in the i think it's back in the 60s hey my sister miriam is there god bless you pastor rick amen let's see who else is there if i can see hola familia vivian strength and peace to you too yes amen let's see yes gladys gladys rodriguez gary you're alive. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Gary. God bless you. Hi, Benny. Praise the Lord. Yes, and he walks with me and he talks with me. That's another good one. Amen. But uh, tonight we have, um, we, we were able to get Sister Amy. She got on the Jesus jet. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> you guys are used to me already. I got to try a different trick. Amen. Okay, producer, put Amy on there. We're going to go and ah, levanto mis manos. Yes. Levanto mis manos. Aunque no tenga fuerza. Levanto. Aunque tenga mil problemas 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that? It's good to see Amy. Uh, uh, although Amy's behind the label. <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to get rid of that label as soon as we buy it. We're on a free trial offer and uh, and um, and and we'll probably buy it because it's a, it's really a good uh, software. Uh, but we're glad that the uh, worship team was able to be with us. That was Joey on the drums and Brother Mark on the piano, Andres Nathniel and Alize and Amy, and that was from the the first uh, the first uh, service that we had online. Praise God! Hey, this has been a blessing. Uh, I see. I think I saw. Um, Nancy's on, amen, and Carmen Jimenez is on, so it's uh, Pastor Bruno, Pastor Peter Bruno, which which one, the bishop or the son? The son. Oh, hey Pete, how are you my friend? I saw that beard of yours, you, you're looking like Moses these days, you can, you, you got a whole clan in there, <laughs> it's good to see you, I mean I don't see you, but I'm glad that you're there, and we welcome you to our broadcast on this Saturday night, we, we like to just praise the Lord and worship. And we, we prayed for Gary. He said he woke up with a, he's telling everybody so I can talk about it. I don't want to scare anybody. Liz Manning, I've been praying for you every day, Liz. So good to see you back here. Yes, every day we remember, we remember all those that are mourning and grieving. And so great strength to you, great strength to you. Gary, uh, we, you, you, you got me to drop on my knees. Hey, Pastor Pete, God bless you. Yes, Metro Church, uh, and somewhere in New Jersey, I, I can't remember exactly where, but it's in New Jersey. A dear friend, a good friend, and he's Bishop Peter Bruno's uh, son, his oldest son, I believe, yes. And a uh, good pastor for many years, and uh, we shared a lot in years ago. It would be good to see you again, but now we're all shut in. Maybe after the shut-in. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, we... Uh, we uh, want to remind everybody that tomorrow morning we're having our Sunday service and we are having communion. So please prepare your communion sets at home. Uh, we're going to have a special worship team that's going to be ministering. So Esther and I can take a little bit of a break, uh, but we will be preaching the word. And I believe Joey's got a song for us tomorrow. Yeah. You want to give us a heads up on what the title is? out of the hiding that's what we all want to do now <laughs> we want to go out of the hiding <laughs> great great so joey's going to minister to us in song and, uh, and then we'll have uh, our communion service is immediately uh after the uh the communion uh, after the sermon amen so um we we're just uh gonna go straight into the next worship we have another treat for you uh, this time I believe it's Sister Alizé. Yeah, Alizé made it tonight. Amen. So let's enjoy this worship song. Praise God.
praise the Lord. He'll do it again and again and again and again. And that's that's our faith. That's our hope. Our trust is in the Lord who does it again and again and again. Well, we thank the Lord for uh, Ali and the worship team. Those are excerpts uh, and uh, we those are copies of a copy. We, we got creative and thank God for Joey. He figures out ways to uh, snip these things out and put them in there so that we can enjoy them. We're going to keep looking for some old ones while we're looking to just bless you guys with many more uh, of our church for coming on. And because of the software, it gives us the opportunity. So we thank God for that. Um, I want to share with you a little bit and then we'll go into prayer. I think uh, we want to really just take our time praying tonight, right? Because there's there's always a lot of needs, but we we want to pray. We want to pray very strongly for um, uh, when, I, when I saw Brother Mark there on the on the video, uh, thinking of the Lee family, also uh, Cliff Patterson's mom. She's 82 years old and stricken with this uh, COVID-19. My brother Gary was not feeling well and put a little concern in our prayers and feeling a little bit better. He's on tonight, and we're going to cover him in prayer and believe in God. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, about Jesus' prayers. You know, we, we often preach and teach and have taught through the years many times on the Lord's Prayer, uh, the one that we call the Our Father. Uh, he, he has another Lord's, there's another Lord's Prayer in the, um, in the New Testament. It's uh, the high priestly prayer of John 17, where he prays for his disciples and he prays for us. He prays for us. And there's a verse in John 17 where he says, and he prays for those who believe without seeing. And that's us. So I didn't know, I don't know if you knew that Jesus prayed for you. And also in Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews, it says that, uh, that he ever liveth to intercede for the saints. He's at the right hand of the Father right now. That's in theology. It's called the session, the session of Christ. And that's what he's doing until he returns. He's interceding on our behalf with the Father. and he's So we're covered in prayer. We're just covered in prayer. It's just that we're not even aware of it. But if we are in the Spirit, you'll know that Jesus is for you. And so... Uh, Christians that cultivate walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit know that God is for you. In Luke 23, 34, this was perhaps the last intercession of Jesus' public ministry. It's perhaps the last intercession of Jesus' public ministry. I mean, post-resurrection, he ministered to just his disciples and he appeared to 500 but his last prayer, his last intercessory prayer of his public ministry was on the cross. And uh, Luke 23, 34 in Spanish says, Y Jesús decía, Padre, perdónalos, porque no saben lo que hacen. Yeah. Uh, it says, Father, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do and he's he's praying for people who are sinning they're sinning against him they're sinning against God and he intercedes he's living out and he's fleshing out his very own commands he said to the disciples pray for your enemies bless your enemies and he didn't tell us to do something that he didn't also do and so Jesus is praying from the beginning of his public ministry to the end of his public ministry. The book of Luke, out of the four Gospels, it's the, the Gospel that really focuses on Jesus' prayer life. And you'll see that in, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is, is going up to the mountain to go speak with the Father. And he's going away to go speak to the Father. In chapter 4, I believe it is, that, that he, he goes after he's baptized, he goes into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days. And there... Satan tempted him, but he begins his ministry by praying, and he ends his ministry by praying. And so when we see the season that we're in, and the verse of scripture that that first Sunday uh, before the lockdown, the first Sunday, no, the first Sunday after the lockdown, 
where um, we could not meet any longer in the sanctuary by order of the govern governor. Uh, we were not supposed to have more than 50 people gathered in any one place. And then later after that, it's 10 people and, and 10 people six feet apart. Uh, that's, that's the rule, that, that's obeying the authorities that God has put over us. And so uh, that doesn't stop us because, you know, the church is not building and uh, the church cannot be stopped. Uh, house of God is not built out of brick or mortar or wood. It's not the old artistry of an architecture of great chapels and, and cathedrals. We are, we are the temple. We are the house of God. And, um, and he, he challenged us in Isaiah 26, where it says that you, we're to go into the chamber, throw ourselves down, shut the door behind you, cry out until the indignance, until this horror passes by. And so God has been telling us in these, I don't know, how many weeks is it already? We're going on our second month, all of part of February, all of March, and and all of April. So we're going in our second month. We're going into our second month. Uh, that would be about that would be about um, sixty plus days. Sixty plus days that we're praying day and night, 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 praying. Jesus prayed every day and he's getting the church to getting accustomed to doing what he did we're following Jesus and so Jesus is praying in his public ministry he opened with prayer in Luke 4 40 days in the wilderness and here we now we go to Luke 23 and he's closing his 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 uh his public ministry with father forgive them so so it's a prayer of forgiveness and what lesson is there for us what lesson is there for us? Well, uh, we see Jesus in his public ministry laying hands on the sick. Uh, his hands can no longer be placed on the sick. Uh, so we are his hands extended. We see his feet carrying him through so many errands that he did. Now we are his feet. Uh, and he still ministers. He still ministers because he's praying right now for us. So what we're finding out and the, and the, the powerful lesson is that ministry of prayer outlasts all other ministries. Right now we can't do any public uh, uh, street ministry. We can't go out, give out tracts. We were supposed to be right now, this month, beginning this weekend to do Saturate New York. That's what we were supposed to be. That was on our calendar. Uh, this weekend, we were supposed to have Dr. David Wins ministering to us. Today, today, we would have had a, a luncheon with Dr. Wins. And tomorrow, he would have preached uh, on the pulpit there on Dry Zaloop. And, and yet, we're going on, right? Because if we can't go to the street, and we can't, you know, we have to keep six feet distance, what can we do? We can pray. And that's what Jesus is teaching us. Hey, listen, when you, when you can't, you know, he was arrested. He was tied up. He was whipped. He was nailed to the cross. And yet he continued ministry because the prayer ministry outlasts all other ministries. Prayer is not marginal. Prayer is central to the ministry of the gospel. And so that's the great lesson we can gather from this. Also, no one is beyond the reach of prayer. We, we were all the way up in the Bronx. And last Friday night, uh, Mario was all the way down in Brooklyn in Wyckoff Hospital, and he was crying that he didn't want to die. He tested positive for the COVID, and we prayed. And I, the next day, we got on uh, on Facebook and we ran with it. He said he's been hospitalized, and you know what that means? He's got a fever. He's got a cough. You all know what that means, and everybody began to intercede, intercede, intercede. And the last person I would think that would ever overcome COVID is Mario, because Mario has a series of underlying uh, issues, including a heart condition, severe diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, varicose veins, you name it. He's got it. And he beat 
the COVID in a matter of four days, that they were going to send him home, but he didn't have a home to go to. And we had to advocate for him so that he could remain and do his quarantine in that hospital. God heard our prayers. God heard our prayers. And Mario was texting us because he listened to me and he, he's, he must be treating those people well because someone is going into that room. And, and you know, a lot of nurses don't want to go into their room. They don't want to be taking a phone that may be filled with COVID, you know, with the, with the, and they're charging it for him so that, so that he could have a little something so he can text us and he can call us once in a while and tell us that he's doing okay. Somebody's taking a risk. God's touching somebody there. Why? Because prayer has no limit. We could pray for people in the Philippines. We could pray for people in Tokyo. We could pray for people in China. We could pray for people in South America. This morning, today we had to pray for Puerto Rico. Early this morning, a 5.4 earthquake hit in the south area again. And uh, a lot of people are displaced. Uh, and thank God, I, I don't think there were any casualties, thank the Lord, but uh, people have to go to hotels. They can't go to shelters. Why? Because of the COVID, because of the uh, 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 shut-in. And so, more tragedies. And so, you know, right away, and I got up this morning, I texted my son, Justin, how you doing? Did you feel that? He says, of course, they felt it throughout the whole island. It was so big. But he's okay, thank God. There's nothing beyond the reach of prayer. So don't you think that you can't minister because you're locked in. Man, the most important ministry is talking to God because the only one who could do anything in this crisis is the Almighty God. And he ministers still, even though he's bleeding and dying, he's ministering. He turns to the to the thief on the cross and uh, who turned to him and said, remember me when... Lord, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus ministers to him. Who said if you have COVID, you can't minister? Who said if you have a fever, you can't minister? Jesus was hanging on the cross and he's ministering. He's our role model. And how can you minister? Praying, praying, praying. What can we learn from this? That there's power in prayer. Peter preaches. Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost. What does he tell him? He says, I know that you did this out of ignorance. You crucified our Lord and Savior. And you did this. I know. Verse 17. I know through ignorance you did it. But he prayed for us. What did he pray? Father, forgive. Father, forgive. That's why 3,000 got saved that day. 3,000 were baptized. The church was born. Praise God. Prayer birth out of, I mean, the church was birthed out of prayer. For 10 days, they waited in Jerusalem. And on the 50th day after the Passover, the 10th day since they were ordered to go to Jerusalem, on that 10th day, the Holy Spirit came down. What did they do for it? Did they give out tracts? Did they do promotion on every radio station, TV station? No, they, they were in one accord and they prayed and the fire of God came down. There's nothing that prayer can't do. Yeah, power of prayer. We see the fulfillment of prophecy. Yes, in, in the cross, while Jesus is there interceding for the ones who mock him. In Isaiah 53, Isaiah saw the cross prophetically hundreds of years before. And, he, and it says in Isaiah 53, it says, He made intercession for transgressors. That's you and I. And that's all those who were standing there mocking him. He made intercession. The, the, the prophet saw it. He saw it hundreds of years before. He saw the Messiah interceding for transgressors right from the cross. It's a fulfillment of prophecy. And, and, and we see that Jesus identifies with people who are hurting for the first time. First time. He requests the Father. He he, in other cases, he says, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. One time he got in trouble. He says, and he said, well, it's easier. Get up and walk or your sins are forgiven. They came at him. How could he, being a man, forgive sins? And so he had the authority and he had, the Father had given him all rights and permissions to forgive sin. 
He did because when he was incarnated, he was limited to the role that the Father gave him. He didn't lose his power, but he chose not to use it and submit himself totally to the Holy Spirit and to the commands of the Father. But here on the cross, he intercedes and he goes straight to the Father and he says, Father, forgive them. Notice he doesn't say, I forgive you. He says, Father, forgive them. Because they're, they're, they're committing a crime against his son. And he tells the Father, hold it, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Wow. He identifies with sinners. He came to save the lost and sinners. And, and here we see sin's consequence. Sin's consequence is that you're not only a sinner because you violate, because you violate the laws of God, but you're a sinner because you ig you're ignorant of the laws of God. Sins of commission and the sins of omission are equally, are equally uh, meriting judgment. And under the Levitical laws, even sins of ignorance must be atoned for. Even if you're ignorant of something, you still have to bring an offering. You still have to ask for forgiveness. And they didn't even know what they were doing. But he says, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. So he's asking the Father to forgive them without repentance. Only Jesus could do that. That's powerful. That's why he told his disciples, bless them that curse you. Follow my path. Follow my ways. And here we see the hardness of the human heart. They know not what they do. They're so, they're so drunk in their lust and immorality that they don't know what they're doing. They should have known. The scriptures were filled with prophecies. They should have known he lived the perfect life. They should have known the Father, the Father affirmed everything that Jesus did by the miracles that he did. He walked on water. He, he fed thousands of people with just a few loaves and some fishes. He, he healed the sick. He cast out demons. What did he do? He raised the dead. The last miracle that was the culminating, the last straw was the resurrection of Lazarus. That's what they said, oh no, we have to kill him. Now all the people will flock after him. Palm Sunday is a result of Lazarus' resurrection. What a powerful resurrection. He cries and he weeps. And then he says, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah, they should have known. They should have known because of his ministry. They should have known because of his perfect life. They should have known because of the miracles that he did and the fulfillment of prophecies. But they were ignorant. And how sad because it's still repeated today. There are still people who know that Jesus is the answer, but they refuse to bow to him. And how sad it is. But Jesus still says, Father, forgive them. What a tremendous example. What a tremendous example to us in this time where we're locked up. I can't do much. Oh, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. Oh, uh, they, they don't let me go to the store. You could do a lot. You could lock yourself in your closet. Or you could join us twice a day and join us as we intercede for these list of names. And if you don't have any list of people to pray for, call me up, man. I'll give you a list. I got a notebook full of people. Yeah, here, here, this is a tremendous example for us. Pray for them that despitefully used you. That's what Jesus said. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Those are powerful words. You can't do that unless you're anointed with the Holy Spirit. You can't do that unless Jesus is in you. Because the, the me that I am, the, the, the personality that I am, the Bronx hood that I am, I ain't going to pray for anybody who despitefully uses me, but the Jesus in me causes me to bless those who curse me. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. And lastly, you know, here we see man. Here we see man and the great and primary need of man is forgiveness. He could have asked for a lot of things. He could have summoned angels to come and deliver him from the Roman soldiers. He could have opened up the earth and swallowed all his crucifying mob that was mocking him. He could have, but he didn't. Because man's primary need is to be forgiven. Why do we suffer so much depression? Why do we suffer so much anxiety in the most prosperous nation in the world? 
Why are we the number one nation in coronavirus? Why are we the epicenter of the world? Because man cannot save himself. All, all the millions, all the military, all the technology, all the science, all the medicine, nothing, nothing, nothing can be done except to cry and say, God, have mercy on us. The greatest need. And then Jesus said, and then Jesus said, Father, forgive. Here we see the triumph of redeeming love because although they mocked him and they, and they ignorantly uh, punished and made to suffer a sinless man, he does not take vengeance. He, he demonstrates the love of God is different from the love of men. We bless those who bless us. We favor those who treat us well. But God, while we were yet enemies, while we were yet sinners, in enmity with God, God sent his son. Redeeming love. Redeeming means he purchased us. He bought the price was the blood of the perfect lamb of God. Look. Look when he offered this prayer. He offered this prayer while they were mocking him. While they were screaming, King of the Jews, save yourself. If you are who you say you are, call the angels. Even one of the thieves was mocking him. And instead of retaliating, what does he show? Redeeming love. Father, forgive them. How dreadful it is to oppose Jesus knowing me. It's dreadful. That would be the unpardonable sin. Knowingly would be the unpardonable sin because the only way you can know that he's the Christ is if the Holy Spirit reveals himself. And there's one sin that cannot be pardoned and that is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit reveals to you who Jesus is and you know that you know that you know that he's the Savior and you reject him, there's no sacrifice. There's nothing that can bring you back. Nothing. You can reject, you can reject religion, but you cannot reject the revelation of Messiah King. When the Holy Spirit opens your veiled eyes and shows you that Jesus is the Savior, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords, you have no excuse. My friend, what, what, what merciful, merciful, merciful redeeming love the greatest ministry is a ministry of prayer he loves me how my Jesus loves me I don't know what he sees in me but he loves me I'll never be the same my friend Jesus loved away my sin if he had to do it all again he do it all again because he loves me how my Jesus 
pray tonight. We're going to present uh, Uba's mother. She tested positive. Uh, Cedas Rodriguez's daughter is working in a hospital loaded with uh, COVID. Victor Rodriguez's father, Bithing, has COPD and his legs are swelling up. We want to pray for him. Patricia Diaz has an entire family in Norwalk, Connecticut. They've all tested positive. Uh, Ginny Delgado's friend, Sandra Hedberg, Hedberg, was taken to the hospital this morning to give birth. She's miscarried all her children, and she's praying that this time she'll be able to deliver. And they were going to induce labor, but she went today. So we pray that she has a safe baby today. Our brother Cliff Patterson's mom, 82 years old, Romella Patterson has COVID. Amen. And uh, Jackie Glover's cousin's wife lost her father and brother at the same time. And mother is alone. And so Lori went down there to be with her. Our brother Mark Lee's brother, Lenny, is still in the hospital. We're still praying for him. Last information that I received is that he's still intubated, and that's just not a good sign. So we got, we, we're praying hard and heavy for the Lee family. They, I, I don't even know if they've been able to resolve the fact that his other brother died last week. There's two members, two brothers. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mario is doing his quarantine. He'll be in the hospital another week and a half perhaps and we're praying that somehow some way that we'll be able to find a place that Mario can rest his shoulders and his head and know and call it home our sister Myrna and our brother Eddie uh, sister's husband died of COVID and they're, they're grieving our sister Nicole is asking for her best friend Nicole hospitalized with COVID. Aníbal Torres has a liver condition and he's winning the COVID battle. Joey Batts for his uncle Peter and his aunt Frances. Our brother Gary was not feeling well today. He had a slight low-grade fever and feeling like, like a ton of bricks fell on his body. I think that's what he described it as. And uh, we, we're praying for Francis and his little princess Abigail that the Lord would just give him strength may it just be change of weather or something like that hay fever or something in the name of Jesus uh, we're praying for Aixa she lost her uncle Jovan who lost his uncle and of course all the people that he lost Vidal's family amen and uh, Pastor Rick is asking for Ernesto Rodriguez, who's uh, 
a school safety officer, and also Lamar Kelly, who's a school safety officer. All the essential workers, all the nurses, uh, Sister Gloria. We pray for the ones who are grieving the loss, the Crawford family, the Manning family, the Wong family, the Fernandez family, the Cruz family, all of these families, uh, Garcia family, they've all lost a, a dear member of their family, and we can go on to the, you know, our sister Gladys lost her sister-in-law, her brother David lost his wife, two sons have lost their mom. It's just devastating, and so we don't want to forget that even though they, they were the earlier ones who, who passed away, we don't want to forget that they're still grieving. This is still a shock to their system. This was not something that was on the agenda. They didn't see this coming. And so it, it's a deep pain. Our brother Nelson, who's here every day, explained that to us in the interview the other day, a magnificent uh, expression that he did. And today his writings, you just check Nelson's writings. They, they speak of a, a man who was deeply in love with his wife and his wife was deeply in love with him. And you don't miss something like that without it having a deep effect in you. But he's teaching us, he is teaching us that the way to handle that is by coming together, not running away, but coming together, coming to this platform and asking for prayer and grieving out loud so that those who love him can encourage him so that he's not alone. I mean, one of the, one of the heaviest things that he revealed to me is when, when we did that, that switcher green room and he could see my face and I could see him in his living room and he could see me here in my living room. And he said, for the first time, I feel like someone came into my house. I'm not alone in this house. You don't know how good it makes me feel that I have someone here, even though I was, I was only there virtually. But that's how big an impact, because he's been alone. He last saw his wife at the elevator when he said goodbye to her. <sighs> you you got to pray for those that are grieving and mourning. And so please, please don't forget them. Please don't forget them. And remember the challenge we received last night. We, we, we grieve, but we're also on a mission. We've got to love our children. We've got to do something for this community. Whenever we get back, it's not going to be church as usual. We've got, we got to start grinding and fighting for the territory that God has given us. The devil has owned our territory for too long. We've got to, we got to displace him. We gotta give him eviction orders. We gotta evict them out of our children's lives. We gotta evict them out of our homes. We gotta evict them out of our marriages. We have to evict them out of our jobs. He's taken too much property that belongs to us. We have been blessed. Jesus has gained the victory for us. Let us become prayer warriors. Let us become prayer warriors. Let us pray like we've never prayed before. Here's the reason why there's no limit to prayer. There's no limit to prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Let us pray. We lay hands on these petitions in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us a ministry that cannot be stopped by COVID. A ministry that cannot be stopped by any government. A ministry that you exercised on the cross. Father, forgive. Intercessory prayer. Lord, we intercede for our, our brothers and our sisters. We intercede for those members in our family that are lost and are at risk. Oh, Father, have mercy. Don't let them die before they have a chance to call your name out. Lord, reach them in Jesus' name, I pray. Every loss, every lost soul in our, in our own circles, oh God. Reach them, O oh Lord Jesus. Minister to them, O oh God. We pray for those that are hospitalized. Leonard Lee, right now in the name of Jesus. A miracle, no less than a miracle it would take, O oh God. Lord, for Pastor Barry and Mark Lee, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, for Mario. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Rosie. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, O oh Lord, for all these that we've asked you for, O oh God. Gary, Cliff Patterson's mom, O oh God. 
Sandra Hepburn, Ramella Patterson, Uba's mom, Patricia Diaz's family in Norwalk, Papa Vitin in South Carolina, the school safety officers, the police officers, our brother Enzo, our brother Josh, our brother Neil, our, our nurses, Marcia, Gloria, in the name of Jesus. Lord, for Jackie Glover's family, sister-in-law, for Eddie Kirkland's friend in the Philippines, for Myrna's family, or Myrna and Eddie's family, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for Nicola's friend, Nicole, oh Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, for Anibal, oh God, for Joey's uncle Peter and Aunt Francis, for Francis and Gary Buon and little Abby and for their daughters, oh God, who are up in his mom's house. Lord, protect them, keep them, oh Lord. Lord, and as we prepare for communion tomorrow, cleanse our hearts, forgive us our sins, sanctify us, oh God. May we come into this service tomorrow with, with a desire to hear from you and a desire to worship you and just, oh God, have communion with you. We ask you these things, O oh God, and we pray, O oh God, that you give us a peaceful night, a night of rest, a night of anointing, a night of victory. All of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Joey, for producing this program. Thank you, my friends who are out there praying. Thank you, Esther. Amen. Good night. I gave my life to Christ. Gave my life to Christ. And it made all the difference in the world. Gave my life.